I want you to hear a story, because you love stories, of this wonderful man's personal change and transformation. This is Bryce. About 10 years ago, I had an experience where I had lost the power in my right-hand side. I was dizzy. I was generally not feeling very well. So I went along to my GP, our general practitioner in the UK, and she had a chat with me, and I went home. A short while later, she phoned the house and said, could you come back in, please, after the surgery is closed? And my partner, Alison, said, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so I went into the surgery, and the look on her face wasn't particularly good. And I wasn't really expecting anything. Um, But when I sat down, she said, she looked at me with a rather teary face, and she said, I'm sorry to tell you, you've got MS. That came as a bit of a shock, as I wasn't really expecting that. Um, and I kind of went, right. I got referred to a neurologist, and the neurologist without any testing, interestingly, um, said, yes, you've got MS, and we'll send you for an MRI and do this sort of stuff. And we'd like you to take some drugs that will mediate your symptoms. And uh, I said, no, I don't have MS. It's not possible. At which point he said, you're in denial. And I said, no, I don't have MS. And deep down, I actually did know that MS was just a label for a series of symptoms my body was showing. I went home, made a few minor changes in my life, and they were very small, and all the symptoms disappeared. I thought, great. I was right, never had MS. <laughs> and I, I progressed on, and probably about five years ago, I started getting other symptoms, and they seemed to get worse. And it, about, I think it was about, yeah, about five years ago, I ended up falling down two flights of stairs, tearing the ligaments in my ankle. Uh, but that seemed to heal but my walking slowly deteriorated. And I've done lots of things on the treatment to go, okay, I'll try this, I'll try that, and clear emotional stuff. And lots of things made little differences. But the whole time, I thought, I'm creating this, but I really didn't know how. And it was, I think I found that more stressful than anything else. So Monday we arrived, um, registration was like effortless, thanks to all the help here. Um, I arrived, um, Alison pushed me in a wheelchair on Monday. I, could, I, I could, couldn't walk up a couple of steps. Um, I couldn't have walked to the back of the room. I, I was basically any distance over sort of 10, 15 meters, I was um, needing to be pushed in a wheelchair. Um, but we had a great night on Monday night, um, and you can see my, I don't know if any of you can see my legs shaking at the moment. It's been doing that all week. I'll come on to that in a second. Um, so, Tuesday morning, we came in. Uh, Tuesday was an amazing day. I, I spent a lot of time getting pushed around in a wheelchair and trying to walk little bits. Um, I don't know what day the walking meditation was, actually. But the walking meditation... Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't even know what today is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, 
So the, f the first day I was getting around in the wheelchair, uh, I, I noticed some changes, uh, which was great. So the second day, I managed to do quite a bit of walking around. I was actually spending a lot of walking, walked downstairs to breakfast and things. Um, and it was like, wow, that's amazing. I took a decision on Tuesday that um, the wheelchair was going to stay at the hotel. Because <sighs> um, I wasn't going to need it. And it felt true, um, but I didn't know how it was going to change. So the next day I was, for any that saw me around, I was struggling a bit roundabout, but I, my body kept changing as I was doing the meditations. I was getting different changes. I was feeling vibrations. Um, I was feeling a little bit of energy moving. I was coming up against myself quite a bit. Um, I did the walking meditation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, got, I wanted to walk up to the place. Unfortunately, um, I wasn't quite able to do that yet. So I got the bus up. I took one look at the slope and went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I had this whole internal chatter going on. What if you slip? What if you fall? Blah, 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 the whole story. And I just went, no, I'm doing this. You know, whatever it takes, I'm doing it. <laughs> so I put my headphones on, found a wee space at the sides, got into the meditation, and then started to walk. And the whole way down, it was literally moment to moment. I took one step, one step, one step. Um, and I got right to the bottom of the hill and then the meditation goes, right, stop, close your eyes. I closed my eyes and my whole body started to shake. It was so intense, I didn't know if I could hold it. I started sobbing, the tears were running down my face. Um, I heard myself make some noises. Um, luckily, I had noise reduction headphones on, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to listen to myself. <laughs> um, and after it, I looked at the hill and thought, oh, I've got to climb up that hill. And I put the meditation back, you know, kept the meditation running and walked all the way up the hill um, and came back here. And um, it's, since then, it's just kept changing if, moment by moment. Genes are upregulating, other ones are downregulating. Um, <laughs> my walking is changing really, really quickly, um, and then it stops, and then it goes back. Um, but yesterday, I had probably the most profound insights ever. Um, I was sitting across there just after lunch, and I was thinking about why is, why is it sort of going back and forward? It doesn't make sense. Um, one minute I'm walking okay, the next minute it's, I'm almost back in time. And I was thinking about having my, in, in, by the way, my in, intent for the week was to, to get over myself. Um, so I was sitting there and I made this realization that, and what I heard come out of my mouth was, I can't pick and choose what I keep. I have to let it all, I have to let it all go. And I had the tears running down my face again. Um, and then I went, I thought, I oh, better go to the toilet before we start. I went through the toilet. And as I went in, I moved, moved into a different space, a, a trance of some sort. 
Um, and I was shown three pictures, um, three points in my life. Um, at the same time, the first one was an incident when I was 18. Um, Scotland's got quite a drinking culture at times. Um, and I was having a drinking competition with um, some friends when I was 18. And we started off with vodka and orange. We ran out of orange, so we went on to vodka and Fanta. Um, and for those of you who don't know what Fanta is, um, it's a fizzy orange. Uh, and uh, I was feeling a bit sick afterwards. And I went through to the toilet. And interestingly, the coincidences of the toilet. Uh, and I thought I'd just gone into the toilet and then come out again. Apparently, I was in the toilet for seven hours. So, yeah. <laughs> so when I came out of the toilet, um, there was quite a few angry friends about the fact that I'd hogged the toilet the whole night. Um, I also was in a bit of a shock because how could I lose six or seven hours of my life? Um, I then was promptly sick over their dog. <laughs> and I mean really over the dog. They have a lovely, a lovely collie. Uh, um, so, so the co collie got, got it. <laughs> um, and I was in such an emotional state that I made a big decision that I would never let myself get out of control again, ever. And I would put... <laughs> And I, and I would put limits on my life so that I would always be safe. <sighs> and, I thought, and I thought, wow. The second time was um, I spent three weeks cycling around rural Uganda. And one of the things that people, we were out with a charity and they, they said, if you're on the road um, and a lorry's coming or a car, get out of the way because in this country they will just take you out. So you really need to look after yourself. Um, and it had been raining. I was going down a steep hill about 30 miles an hour. And at this point, my bike slid from beneath me. And all I can say was, has anybody seen those kung fu films where people jump through the air and are like doing supernatural things? Um, that happened to me. I went into the air. My bike went skidding down underneath the lorry. I landed running, perfectly safe. I felt like somebody had lifted me up and gently put me down. Uh, and that whole experience was in the moment, going with the flow, unpredictable. The third picture I was shown in, in, together was when I went to Peru, and I spent three months living in Peru. And as I went through that, that time, when I arrived, the person I was supposed to meet wasn't there. So I had three months unpredictable, traveling with shamans, um, she people, medicine women who said she'd met me before on astral plane. That freaked me out a bit. Um, I did amazing things. Um, in a country that, you know, I didn't know, and it, the whole time I felt safe. And what I realized was, like, wow, it's, I was a different person when I was in Peru, and I was a different person when I was in Uganda, because the environment was so different. And then the voice said, so, you're safe when you let go and trust. And you're not safe when you try to control and keep yourself safe. So 
still haven't got that insight in the toilet. No. <laughs> um, I stepped out the toilet at the back there with the two sticks I was using at that point and just stood up with the sticks and held them like that and walked right across the back. Um, and for a, a good three hours yesterday afternoon, I was um, vibrating, uh, like uh, my, whole, my legs were vibrating at a very high frequency. And I was so looked after yesterday, we went up to the garden and uh, grounded and just stepped into a new version myself. On the way back for the afternoon meditation, I uh, was walking from the garden to the lift, and I wasn't walking with the sticks, I was just holding Alison's shoulder just to keep me steady, and asked her to speed up a bit, because I w it was walking too slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I took three steps, and on the fourth step, my legs stopped working, and I started to fall. But I caught myself, and Alison caught me, so I didn't fall. But the moment before it happened, I caught a thought going through my head. And it was a thought of me with the two sticks. And that thought put me straight back into the past. And in that moment, I realized um, how easy it would be to slip back asleep and go back into old patterns. Um, so Alison was kind enough to hide the sticks from me. She took them away. And, uh, uh, but I sat with that and went, how could a single thought have such a powerful impact? And then I realized, because I thought, well, like, I need to get rid of the sticks altogether, um, albeit they're quite useful. Um, and then I had the insight, it's not the sticks that was the problem, because sticks are just sticks. The problem was the association I had with the sticks and what it meant to me. So I changed that, and I can use the stick now just as it's a useful, and I'm on one now, but it's a useful just to point stability while I'm particularly going up and down steps and things. But I realized how powerful for me that predictable future is. Um, and then I had the insight about, but there's other people have a predictable future for me as well. And if I'm going back, how will they see me? I thought, right, I need to think about their predictable futures for me and my predictable future for me. And <laughs> then I thought, actually, no, I don't. The only thing I have to think about is me stepping into the unknown. Because actually, provided I do that, I'm greater than my environment, and it doesn't really matter. <sighs> so I recognize I've got a way to go. Um, I have been accused of being impatient in the past, and um, I feel I should be running already. <laughs> um, and I'm changing by the minutes. I mean, I can feel my body changing as I'm standing up here. Uh, I feel like I'm give, being given the gift of some amazing insights for myself, which will help me make it sustainable rather than slipping back into an old pattern. I just don't know what's happening next, and that's okay, because um, I don't need to set limits anymore, I don't need to control anymore, and it's going to be okay. Now, you came here in a wheelchair, uh, yeah. pretty limited, and you've noticed changes in your body that allow you to move easier, that you feel like um, you've improved. I just don't want you to get caught up in the analysis of this process. 
The insights are important, but you just got to keep going. You got to keep entraining that nervous system. You got to keep surrendering to that frequency. You got to become more of it and less of you and let your body catch up. It will catch up. So the more you have those moments like you did in the walking meditation where you felt your heart open, it is, it are, it is those effects that are the most important for your body because now your body's chemically responding to your mind. Your body's getting new information from your mind, not from the experience, but from your mind. It's that process, Bryce, that begins to select and instruct the proper genes and downregulate the other genes. So there's a change going on in your body, and I want you to get caught up in the surrendering into that frequency, into becoming and uh, mentally rehearsing your walking, mentally rehearsing your standing, mentally rehearsing, you know, really you know, work on feeling what you feel and improving it. All of those things add to it. And by the same means, if your body's tired and you've taken it to the limit, our bodies get tired. And you have to be respectful of your body at times too and let it rest and let it repair and let it catch up and not push it and have it be about forcing it into the future, but having it take you into the future. You understand? Did he do beautifully or what? <laughs>